Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, this is Vinny Vivici again. We are about to start the match between uh, Nature Phoenix, Chris Phoenix, and Oata. It's a match of Group Z. <coughs> uh, obviously, uh, Chris Phoenix is uh, one of the best players from uh, the old days, and probably uh, a favorite, or, or at least one of the favorites, to win this tournament. And then uh, he's playing versus Oata. He is a Japanese player. <laughs> Uh, very good as well. I don't know him that well in his one-on-one, -on -one, but in team games he was always uh, a very good player. The map is going to be Great Plains. It's the standard map for the group stage. And uh, Nature Phoenix is playing uh, as British versus Owata playing as uh, Iroquois. This match is casted, by the way, both by me and by Shimras. Uh, so for any Japanese uh, viewers, you should check out Shimras' stream. We will be doing the casting in Japanese. So far I think uh, this map looks uh, pretty good. Both have two gold mines relatively close, but most importantly for the British. Uh, one close, one in the back, and uh, a big hurt over here. The second one is going to be a little bit further for him, but this is already uh, a decent start to hold out the first part of the game. Uh, what we see here is Aroqua has, uh, like I said, the mines over here, a hunt over here, and a second one there, so this all seems pretty balanced. Aroqua going for a trading post, <coughs> pretty standard uh, strategy. Obviously he's not taking this trading post over here, because then he would miss the first uh, XP. But because he built it over here, you will see that he will be right on time for the first uh, trade card uh, to pass, and now he will gain his uh, experience. <coughs> Um, I'm not sure exactly what Nature Phoenix started with, probably 200 wood, he made one house, which got a free settler of course. Here we see some uh, first fight, Nature Phoenix is gonna try to uh, steal a treasure. He used his crack shot, but he's a little bit slow it seems to pick up the treasure, so Uwata in the end gets it. Might have been a misclick, not sure. Anyway, 80 wood, always very nice for Aroqua to uh, to get a treasure like that. Uh, the bear is killed though, so that means one uh, scout less for him. And a uh, very typical uh, house being built with the early Trava that Aroqua gets for free. Uh, I think it's a very good position over here, uh, because you have a uh, line of sight about everything the British is uh, going to do. And for example, when a bridge is trying to bring in this herd, you will immediately know about it. And the Aroqua has a few strategies. Um, of course, you can go for a really hard rush. I think it's not preferred to very good players, which obviously uh, Nature Phoenix is. Uh, the other two strategies are going for a forward war hut, uh, putting on some pressure uh, to make sure that the British can't you just boom, uh, boom very easily and get a good economy. You want to keep that a uh, little bit in, uh, in pace. And the other option is kind of uh, a semi-FF, or perhaps even a fast uh, fortress, and just come with like the forest prowlers and uh, very good shipments of the Aroqua. Not sure yet what he's going to go for, we'll have to see it in a little bit. You see that Nature Phoenix already brought in this hunt over here, and he's already trying to get in the second hunt. Um, versus Aroqua it's probably a smart idea. Uh, as you see now, he's also aging. Uh, of course, you also want to try to age up as fast as possible for any rush civilization. So the minute that he was transferring villagers from food to wood, he was aging. And I think that's around the same time that he sent this villager out over here to hurt this hunt towards his town center. <coughs> uh, if you don't do this, and the Aroqua uh, just puts on enough pressure on you and gets map control, it's going to be really, really hard to get this hunt at any time later on. So it's really important to bring in the second hunt uh, fairly soon. Um, we see that Squid Phoenix also gathered 70 coin. By the way, I just call him Phoenix from now on, but obviously he's the same guy as Nature Phoenix. Maybe some of you know him as Nature Phoenix. There we have uh, Aroqua aging up um, with the Trava. Warhead building in the center, taking map control of both the gold mine and this food over here. And very nice later on, uh, if he has a few units, he can get this 300, 320 XP, which is basically like another shipment. 
uh, so it's very nice. <coughs> Nature Phoenix uh, make going for market here, uh, pretty standard. Uh, he's probably gonna go for some kind of longbowman and pikeman defense, uh, not just because it's his style, but also because it's probably the best option versus Iroquois. Uh, also making a little bit of a wall over here. Um, what you see here is that this wall is aligned, uh, not aligned, it's uh <coughs> built over here so that every unit that stands here can't reach the villagers at the gold mine uh, and also can't uh, reach the tower while the tower can still shoot at them, same for the town center. So it's very uh, well placed here. It also guards his, uh, his, uh, his herd over here. The herding of this one I think didn't go as planned, maybe there was a back herd, I didn't notice, but um, he probably won't have it, like it started like over here, he probably won't have it like over here by now. Anyway, barracks going up, <coughs> immediately is stable for the Araqua. I think the British gonna be starting with 5 pikemen anyway, because you also always have the Kanya shipment. <coughs> It's important that the British will uh, use his scout, which is currently over here, to find out what the Iroquois is doing, because... <coughs> Sorry, just a second. <coughs> because uh, the Iroquois has a few options. Um, they can... I if they would go for a really hard rush, it would have already been there by now, so that's obviously not the case. But they can go for some pressure or a very economic build, or going into uh, set up for the fortress age. And if you don't scout as well as British, you don't know how you should adapt to it. Because if they, for example, uh, are not going to make many units early on, like now, <coughs> the British will have some more time to boom and get some economy going. Otherwise, he probably has to make more units just to hold off any pressure from the Iroquois. He uses five pikemen to uh, seize his longhouse here. Uh, that's the risk. Uh, if you go for a longhouse that far forward, you could have also put it like somewhere over here. Uh, if you go for a longhouse that far forward, you have to be sure you put pressure on the British, else they just can use the units to siege it, like you see what's happening now. Uh, nothing from the Iroquois coming in. Uh, it's also, of course, very hard to push into uh, a setup like this. Uh, very nice wall, tower, town center, e even Minutemen if needed. So the house is going down. Another one already being built. Sign of a good player, by the way. Always make sure you have enough population that you never get popped. Housed, I mean. Uh, trying to go for a little bit of a raid, but I think this is barely going to be in line of sight of the of the wall. Uh, otherwise, would be in line of sight of the town center by now. So he's already sending his pikemen uh, over there. Longhouse over here, some line of sight. Of obviously, it's not going to be scouted very easily by Owata, because it's on uh, on wood and not on food. Trying to come in for a little bit of pressure here. He is he did upgrade the villager HP, very important. Uh, so he saved his villager and the Arqua is not gonna get anything done over there. While he do does take some damage from uh, the defensive buildings of Nature Phoenix. Arqua hero of course boosting the hit points. Uh, also very good meat shield, 750 HP. And the option for the crack shot, so it's always important to bring this guy with your army. It increases your army strength by so much. Pikemen were still in place, still in position here to defend versus any raid. So you see here that, uh, as expected, British is just gonna go for a very defensive posture, waiting up what the Iroquois is gonna do. Uh, as long as the Iroquois is not having too few units, you might. Uh, probably pretty sure that he's gonna stay for a longer colonial agenda. If at some point his pressure is gonna stop and he stops making units as well, you have to really scout about what's going on. Uh, what you see here is that uh, Tanya trying to go to the arena should be Michael and the Pikeman, it's just going to be now. I always want to take him in first and we have to actually to the Two units for Nature Phoenix out here. Can we underestimate this? The main man popping out. Uh, they should be used in race uh, in one of the As he's trying to collect this now. Using some villages as well. Of course, here yeah, since the, uh, the cavalry is the most important unit for him, he should be targeting his town center and his uh, tower on the top of Especially the tower because of the bonus damage against cavalry. I am so aggrieved! I may not steer If you have enough longbowmen, they can be fine. Uh, 
Ahí nada, espérate que alto es un pues, punto es. I think he maybe just went for one house too many. I should have had a few more units out just, just to be safe. Or perhaps there was something bigger. He's now losing a lot of villagers. Uh, shipping 600 wood over here. Just a quick look at the post game. He shipped. Owata shipped villagers in Phoenix afterwards. Yeah, he's now trying to buy time. He already used the minimum, so this is going to be a very rough spot. More coming in. Uh, all his villagers are inside his town center except on this side, so he's not going to get any resource. Now, of course, you can hold this out for a little bit, but at some point you just need to get the resources to make an army. He did get a trading post though. Uh, of course, the Arquat updated uh, upgraded the trading post, so you can benefit from it as well. Now gonna use his villages to fight. Seems over here. Of course, there's just any uh, barrier skirmisher we're gonna use for the melee mode because uh, he has uh, range resistance and melee resistance. And he'll just be Somehow he is trying to get rid of this, but good thing he had the villa upgrade, but it's gonna be really hard still. You see he's trying to move close to use the villages in melee mode like he did here. Keep in mind over here still a few villages gathering wood. Uh, but in the end it's uh, it's game over and uh, I think he underestimated a little bit what the Arako was doing. Uh, perhaps he should have scouted a little bit more with his hero. Um, or make a little bit more uh, of a wall over there over here on this side because if we take a look at army count um, you see here that uh, from one to to, to six is normal uh, normal first batch is five pikemen uh, afterwards he has uh, only uh, two longbowmen and then we see uh, a jump of four so that was I think six or I mean four other longbowmen so by then he has like uh, six longbowmen and that's I think it should be five five five, and then you're in most cases uh, okay to hold. Uh, again, here from twelve to uh, to fourteen is only two again. So to me, it seems that um, he wanted to try to sneak in a few a few more a few too many houses, which you see here in his villager boom. And while you can use your villages, then of course to hold off a little bit of the pressure, uh, you definitely need some army units as well for the Arqua, uh, because in the end, if you are gathering. If you're gathered inside your town center, like uh, the couple of uh, one or two minutes, then Araqua is just gathering all over the map and sending more units into your base. And you can do this for a short time, but not for a long time. Um, also, pumping out the Minutemen a little bit earlier, together with the Pikemen and Longmen over here, or perhaps even o in this side, because uh, this is a better position. He attacked when the Pikemen were coming over here, but the Kanya easily ran back. And Longbowmen were here, kind of getting caught by the Kanyas. If he would have been over here with the tower, the ta tower town center, a small choke, uh, the Minutemen as well, and perhaps some villagers, I think he would have done better. So anyway, um, first game of that group, I believe. Uh, I think Phoenix could have done a little bit better. Very good game of Owata. Uh, like you saw, a few Aenas at start, but then just going for more economy and then pumping out a lot of Kanyas and Aenas. Um, they are still probably the the favorites for this group to come out, so uh, we have to wait and see how it goes for the next uh, matches in the group. Okay, this was um, the match that I'm going to cast. I think there's no other match at the moment for me to cast, so I will just uh, stop the stream for now because I still have some work to do. I will be gone for this weekend, but I will be back on the 14th of October, that's coming Monday. And from there on, I will probably stream a lot of matches, and uh, the schedule, I believe, is already on the PK Clan site. So tune in later, and uh, let's see how this tournament is going to evolve and who's going to get through.